There are free tools that you can use like WordPress and Wix to build your own website. So the other series, the uh, third level of our training, which you've only spent how much for? $25. $25 teaches you how to build your own website at your own domain. Now, if you have your own business and you have your own website, should your email be at gmail.com? No. 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 Why? Absolutely, it's not your domain. Yeah. So if I have currencycirculator.com, I don't want to be Joyce Licorice at Gmail. I want to be Joyce Licorice at currencycirculator.com because it gives me what? Credibility. More That's credibility. It really. teaches you how to do that. That's like a big gray mystery. How do I get my email? <laughs> it costs you like three ninety five. Mm -hmm. You just have to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So he teaches you how to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So and you've only spent. <laughs> All right, the next level is marketing. So we learn the difference between marketing and advertising. We learn about branding, and then there's a marketing for dummies section that is going to be in the training that kind of teaches you A to Z, everything you need to do to market your small business. For those of you that already have businesses out there, social media marketing is taking over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all, when I sold out all those shows of Color Purple, you know what my marketing budget was? $450. Mm. I made $80,000 off a $450 marketing campaign. We use social media. <laughs> That's also what I'm trying to do for his company as well, which I can also do for you guys. But, well, you know what I mean. It's not, I don't own it. It's his company. I'm a partner in it, but you know what I mean. Long story short, uh, social media marketing is the next generation, the next age of marketing. Mm -hmm. It's what people are doing right now. Yes, it and it'll cut your marketing budget down like tremendously. Um, we also go over growth strategies, marketing your small business on a shoestring, okay? Who wants to do it cheap? <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> amen everybody. and amen. <laughs> and you learn how to do this for what? How much did you spend? $25. $25. All right. Level five is the leader level, and it's about obtaining products and services. So let's say you don't have an online business. This man is going to come up here and tell you how much money he was able to make in a hotel room over a weekend when he went from broke to having something and then so and he's going to talk to you about how to obtain products and services for your site if you don't have a business or if you're in MLM and your MLM is stagnant and you need to create your own business he tells you how to do that how to obtain those products and services for your business um, and monetizing your knowledge that's another thing that we talk about in level five Okay, we're going to move on to level six, and that's the guru level, about planning your estate. How many people in the room have a will? I need one. Okay, how many of y'all use, like, some real cheap, cheesy service, like, prepaid legal to make your will? Okay, you <laughs> might need to revisit your will. I'm just keeping it real. So this tells you the things that you need to make sure are in your will, okay? A lot of times, we don't think about that. I'm, I'm 42 years old. I don't have one yet. I need to get on that because people are leaving here. They're checking out. Amen. All right, so um, they're teaching you how to do your will, talks to you about trust and estate planning and creating wealth. How many people in the room will do that? Yes. And you learn how to do that for? $25. All right, the next level is the adept level. It's about real estate investing, and that's kind of my little specialty. One of the other groups I belong to is called House Jerk, and they teach you how to do real estate investing. So um, I've learned from rookie status how to turn no money into some money. And one of his models that he says a lot is, if you can't make money with no money, you don't know how to make money. <laughs> <laughs> so, essentially, it's going to talk to you. Now, this is the section that I'm really, really, it takes my heart because I have been able to really, really do some amazing things in real estate. I have a deal right now. I'm going to tell you all about it real quick. But in real estate, it's all about controlling the paper, not necessarily having the money. So mm -hmm. in being a part of the network, I was doing the IT side of things, not necessarily participating in the real estate side of things. And I start seeing these young kids come in a room with these twenty, thirty, fifty, eighty thousand dollar checks. You heard this story before. And I said, "Honey, I need one of them checks because my just over broke is gone." And I'm doing this consulting stuff, and I'm not making the money I'm used to making. So essentially, I got on the internet. I call it YouTube University. Google University, that's All right. right now. I graduated from Google University. <laughs> so I, I went on right. Google, honey, and I found this man that had a list of properties for sale, and I called him. And I said, look, I, I'm a part of a network that can, can buy your property. Can I represent one or two or some of them? He said, I got this 50 property package I ain't been able to move. You can represent it for 30 days. How much I got to put down? Nothing right now. I'll just put it on contract. You got 30 days to try to move it. 
Well, it fell through the first person. I went through the second person. Now I'm on my third person. When this deal closes, it's a 50 house project. It's $1.5 million for the package after I added my markup on it. Mm -hmm. I had a $2,000 per house. What's the math on that? $2,000 times $50. $100,000. So, okay, no, but it got better because by the third person, he had reduced the price. But the third person that heard about it when the first person heard about it. So I ain't tell her the price got reduced. So she still offered me the first price. So now my $100,000 bonus is with the $250,000 bonus. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till they can close this deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about USD. <laughs> but anyway, the real estate investing piece is, is that's my heart, that's my specialty. This is my first deal. This is my first deal. My husband, on the other hand, has been able to do a few deals here and there. His first deal was 16000 no money out of pocket. So we're going to teach you the no money out of pocket way to invest, buy, sell, and flip real estate by controlling a piece of paper. So we'll talk about that. And you learn how to do that for what? Right. All right, we're on the last level. And this is his specialty. We call it the Grand Master Level. Yeah. Yeah. And it almost needs its own theme music. It's really exciting stuff because... <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I'm all about the music, you know? Yeah, yeah. If we had some boom, she wow, music to go with it, we will put it on. But the grandmaster level is about private trust participation. So once you've gone through all the levels of the program, with how much of your investment? $25. After you've gone through all levels of the program, how much money have they made, y'all? $27,000. You've made $27,000 off your $25 USD investment. And you've only spent $25 to get in the program. Awesome. You've got all this amazing knowledge, and you come out with $27,000. Now, you can go and buy you some red bottom shoes or a couple of them purses if you want to. Or, y'all say it with me. Or, oh. or <laughs> you can pull your money together with a few other people who've got $27,000 and start your own private trust. And that, to me, is also another way to not only eliminate poverty, but start to lock arms with one another and work together, right? Yeah. Is that powerful or is that powerful? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Another presentation, like he didn't quit it like James Brown, because I'm hungry. Somebody oh, said there's going to be some lunch included in this thing. You can go down like that, and I'm going to figure out I need to eat. So, <laughs> <laughs> any questions on my part? I just covered the, uh, the training stuff. Okay. Good. Excellent. I hit it and quit it like James Brown. I'm telling you, I'm
not a professional <laughs> like that. When I speak and everything, it's always from the heart. It's give it to you raw, you know. They were telling me, you know, they're trying to train me and everything. You need to go out and go for the clothes and everything. You talk too long. Yes, yeah, long. And so, <laughs> now, I do have a tendency to do that. We don't really hear today. We don't. And the, re the reason why, and they touched on it a little bit, is yes, I'm a radio host. I have a, um, I have a an internet radio blog. It's called High Frequency Radio. Mm -hmm. And um, I started about five years ago. And I started in, in, a, in the bedroom of my uh, nephews. I was at visiting my sister. And I was my nephews. I was sleeping in his room. And I, I just made a declaration to the universe. I said, I want to make money talking. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Because I said, you got to follow my passion. I like to talk. So I said, I want to make money talk. Didn't know how I was going to do it or anything like that. And then a couple of months later, I uh, was listening to a radio program, um, another somebody else's blog. They started talking about a subject that I had a little bit of expertise in, and I called into the show. When I called into the show, uh, I kind of took over the show. They started having people call in and ask me questions and everything, and from that point, I caught the bug. I said, man, that was fun. They invited me back the next day to do another show, and after that, uh, it was in my mind, you'll always hear this voice in the back of your mind, you need to do this. Ooh, mm -hmm. You need to do this. Now, all you have it. All of you have it. There's some voice in the back of your head telling you what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And you're not, and you won't listen to it. Mm -hmm. And so that voice was in the back of my mind, this, you need to get a radio show, get your own blog, get your own blog. So, about two, <laughs> so I, I said, I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna do radio. I don't know nothing about doing no radio. And so uh, two weeks later, my friend from Philadelphia called me up. He said, say, man, dang, I'm just talking to you. He reached her because they used to work for me at her office. That's when I first met uh, Brenda at my own office, at a staff out of Snailville. And, um, you know, it was one of my staffers and everything. He was saying, you know, you know I'm just talking to you and everything. And, and then right there, I made a decision. I said, you know what? We're going to talk every day. Just like how we talk on the phone, we're going to get a radio show, and we're going to talk. And instead of us talking on the phone, we're going to talk over the air and let everybody hear what we talk about. That was my whole plan. <laughs> that was my plan. And it worked like a breeze. For two years straight, our radio show grew, grew every month. We had the analytics in the back, and I just watched it grow, grow, grow. And that's what kept me, kept me pumped. I'm like, God, the people are listening to me. And the first show I did, I said, um, about 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> this is Yusuf Bell, and, um... You know, you're um, listening to um, um, the radio show. <laughs> so I asked my homeboy, I said, say, man, how is Sam? Um, he was like, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what I go for. I go for when people listen to me, I want them to feel like I'm on the porch talking to you. I'm approaching you. Mm -hmm. And it grew. Now, I started doing it in the bedroom. From there, I went to Starbucks. I wasn't making any money. So I was living with a girl at this time. And I wasn't making any money on the radio. I was making money, but not on the radio. And we were living together, and the rent was due. And, you know, we've been dating for a short time, so you know, you know how women get, it's like... Don't pay the rent this month. <laughs> now, I had the money to pay the rent, but sometimes we don't want to go in our savings there, because you know I had a little money, they, you know, women, they smell that. <laughs> you know, so I said, okay, so I said, you know what? 
I'm going to do something. I'm going to hold a webinar, and I'm going to charge $150 for it. I charged $150 for it, and I made an announcement over the air on it. Within one hour, 10 people signed up. I made $1,500 in my PayPal account in one hour. I was all too late. All right. And I ain't never looked right. back since. All right. I said, I didn't found it. The Holy Grail. They said, man, you're two times in his life to be rich. You get screwed up one time. Mm -hmm. All right. I made about six to eight thousand dollars a week for the next two years. And you know, I'll prove it to you. Um, this right here is my here's my website. Oops, let me uh, let me look it up. That's my website to So clear. Thank God. Now we just open it up. Yeah, we'll uh, And I'm going to show you some of the stuff I do. I built my, she, she's going to tell you the story about I was in the hotel room and I built my own website mm -hmm. in the hotel room. Because first I was having people build websites for me. And I'm going to tell you about the problems with that, when other people build websites for you. That can be a potential problem. There it is right here. This is my website right now for my radio station. Um, can you turn off the light? Um, Um, I built this web uh, this website. I built all my websites myself. Uh, last five years, I've consistently made over six figures in the last five years. I mean, here's my number for the year before. That was for like 10 months, nine months, $872,000 straight off the website. As you said, this is just coming off the website. This is not, not nothing. I took a trip to Hawaii, went to Waikiki, had one of my listeners fly me in over there. I thought he needed some help. He flew me in. I got off. I got off. The, I got off the plane. He said, "Man, I want you to want to shake your hand. Just want to meet you and shake your hand." Had a, a, a hotel for me on the beach. I stayed two weeks in Waikiki. I was mad because I didn't bring no woman with me. <laughs> I, 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 I thought I was coming over to do business. You know, I'm sitting up on the beach. But the whole time I was there, I was working. I drove from Seattle to Atlanta. I saw the whole entire country. I went up to Montana. Ain't no black people in Montana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zebra. Mm -hmm. But it was beautiful. And the people were nice. Very nice people. And um, saw mountains I'd never seen before. Stopped in uh, North Dakota. Went to the, uh, what is that, the, what the president is? Mount Rushmore. Didn't see no black people. There's a million people there. Everybody was white, you know. But the thing that is, my point is, during that whole time, I only drove about four hours a day. The whole drive was like 41 hours. You know why we drove four hours a day? Because I wanted to see the country. I drove stop everywhere. I mean, if I'm going to drive from Seattle to Atlanta, I'm seeing everything. Because ain't no telling when I'm coming back up this way. Mm -hmm. All right. So I saw everything. And I just stopped in the hotel, got on my computer, did my show in the morning, did answer my emails, filled my little orders and everything, got back in the car and took off. I didn't skip a beat. That's the power of having your business on the internet. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I did that number right there for about five years straight. Some people been in my house. I'm not rich. I don't. I don't claim to be rich or anything like that. But I, I'm comfortable. I've been living very comfortable for the last couple of years. I've done what I want, when I want, how I want, where I want. Be kind of living like that. I always like to stay single, you know, the woman come in and stay out. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right, all right. But anyway, this right here, I came up with this idea because on my radio show, there was a lot of discussions over the air about the community. Um, I deal, I talk a lot about uh, situations in our community like, um, uh, you know, uh, prison sentences for our young men, mm -hmm. uh, which are 
just crazy. A lot of you don't That's understand the judicial man. system. Your judicial crazy. system is not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll just give you the short form. It's just a front for slavery. Mm -hmm. But when you understand how the laws operate and mm -hmm. so forth, you'll see that it is also fraudulent mm -hmm. what they are committing against us. Mm -hmm. the drugs is a victimless crime. And I don't know why we ain't sitting here thinking about how can somebody see you in prison for life and you didn't hurt anyone. That's the laws of God. You got to hurt someone. Mm -hmm. These people have committed commercial crimes and everything is based off of commerce. And they will send you to prison for life based off commercial crime. If you don't believe me, go to 27 CFR 72.11 and it will tell you that all crimes are commercial. And you need to understand your constitution for the United States of America, specifically Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 9, and Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, as well as Article 3, Section 2 of the United States Constitution to understand what I'm talking about. If you do not know your rights, you do not have any. Mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson said, so those true. who hope to be both ignorant and free are hoping for something that never has been and never will be. It don't exist. You got to know something, okay? But anyway, I, why I came up with this, let me use some numbers. Everybody heard of Black Wall Street? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. How many times did money circulate in Black Wall Street? This is about 1920s. This is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. About three or four times. Three or four times. Anybody else want to take a guess? One or two. One or two. Seven, How many times did money seven, circulate five. in the community? At least 20 times. Seven, At least 20 five. times. Anybody else want to take a jab? Seven, five. You know the answer. I ain't talking. Yeah. 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 During that time, black people, our money circulated in our community 75 to 100 times. Now, the reason for that, obviously, is because of uh, racial segregation. All right, when we were forced to do business with each other. Mm -hmm. During that time, we had our own school system. We had two banks. We had an airstrip. We had a, 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 a busing system. We had all of that, all our own stuff. And we were doing business internationally. Okay, now anybody want to tell me today how many times our money circulated in our neighborhood? Two times. One day. Yeah. Anybody want to tell me how many times black dollars circulate within your community? Two times. About three seconds. Mm -hmm. That was, that was close down as we got. All right, it's 15 minutes. Every dollar that come into our community right now today, within 15 minutes it leaves. It never sad, comes back. That's sad. That's right. That's I, really sad. I have a problem with that, especially when I go to Mardi Gras down in the hood, and I want to give me some gumbo, and I'm thinking I got to get away from downtown with all the bougie people is at and head to the hood and get me some real food, and I get down in the hood and everything, and all the get our soul food places on my B&B. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> you talking, son. Right. I yeah, can't sir. do it. I, you want some 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 gumbo cooked by B&B later? No. Okay. Go to their neighborhood <laughs> and open up a Vietnamese restaurant. It won't make, ain't it won't make no money. Ain't Go open up a Vietnamese you a black man, go to their neighborhood and open up a Vietnamese restaurant. Let me tell you something. How many times has anybody from any culture ever spent one dollar? No, I ain't going to say a dollar. I'm going to be very specific. How many of you have seen a penny being spent in your neighborhood it's from other cultures? Uh, they don't, they don't happen. Not nothing. Nothing. Okay. We spent $1.2 trillion last year. And people are talking about reparations. See, when we talk about poverty, black people didn't have money. Mm -hmm. yeah. We spend money foolishly. Don't we? And stupidly. Don't okay, we? we spent one point two trillion. We spent two hundred billion on hair. <laughs> we spent another two hundred billion on tennis shoes. I ain't gonna let the men go either. That's right, sad, don't. Sad. I'm gonna say this. If an extraterrestrial came from another planet. <laughs> and you know, they're kinda of looking at everything, the earth. And they said, look, this got one group of women over here putting some other people hair on their head and everything. Well, that ain't look strange if you came from another planet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, the, the wolf walking around trying to put sheep on her on the back and everything. <laughs> and I, it, it don't look strange to us, but I have to bring these type subjects up. I don't have no problem with that. I'm black women, beautiful, whatever they put on. I got a problem with Y'all ain't in control of it. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I got a problem with. All you ain't right. in control of it. You don't sell it, don't be in control of it. Amen. Let me tell you something. This thing about going to school, get a good education, and good grades, get grades, get a job, that ideology was passed to you around 1978. In 1978, 
they start pushing go to school and get an education and get a good job and it got y'all away from the trades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had the trades because we came out of slavery. We was the one cooking, cleaning, cutting yards, fixing things, football and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we had all the trades on lock. So they took the trades from you. Got our women thinking if you got a trade, you just say, you know, I need this man with this suit right here. Look like he did some college educated man. <laughs> <laughs> man came to fix my dishwasher in my house, made thirty thousand dollars a month. Average black woman on the street wouldn't even be able to recognize him. Because he drive a truck mm. and mind his business and keep it moving. Okay. Make thirty thousand dollars a month. Trade ain't got no college degree. Okay. I like how Charles Barkley said. Hmm. They were trying to tease Charles on one time. You know, he didn't oh, college. He ain't got no college degree. Hmm. So I was asking Charles. They were all talking about the school. Marquette. I went to Duke. I went to this. He said, Charles, what school you go to? And Charles said, I ain't go to school. Hmm. But everybody worked for me, did <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, I'm everybody about. worked for me then. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. I say, yeah. everybody worked for me. Because you go to school, it, te it teaches you how to be an employee. Yes, it right. does. Now, the reason for that, while we don't understand, is this thing called public and private. Because y'all here talking about this being coin. And I understand it as long as it's private. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you only I have one problem I have with it is that it is, does cross over into the public. And it's only one thing that does that. And the one thing that does that okay. is the Federal Reserve notes. Right, mm -hmm. right. The Federal Reserve notes is owned by the Federal Reserve Bank. They are a private bank. The Federal Reserve came into existence in 1913. All right. That's the only thing. Have anybody seen that movie, um, John Wick? Yes. Yes. Everybody in here should see that movie. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. John Wick is showing you how the elite uh -huh. and how you yeah. Are supposed to be actually operating privately because what they talk about bartering and all that—that that is real. Mm -hmm. But what happened to us in 1933? They took gold and silver out of circulation. We had the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. The president at that time was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Okay, during this time they made a thing called the New Deal. Anybody remember that New yeah. Deal? Mm -hmm. I probably learned about it in high school, but they just gloss over. Don't tell you what it's really about. That's right. Okay, here's what the New Deal was. Let's make a deal. Mm. You work for us, and we'll take care of you. Mm. So they start giving y'all health care, welfare, mm -hmm. unemployment, mm -hmm. all of that right there. All that came into existence in 1933. Mm -hmm. And they gave y'all birth certificates and social security cards. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's when that all came into existence. And the reason for it, when you have to take benefits from the government, you become a slave. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all don't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are free. This is the land of the free. Amen. Free people raise their own kids. Free people teach their own kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't ask the government to do it for you. That's right. Come right. On. Free people take care of their health. Mm -hmm. You don't need no health care. Eat the right damn food. Okay. okay. That's all you got to do. That's right. All right. That's right. Yeah. It's that simple. Right. Your body is composed of the earth. From the yeah. dust you came and dust you returned. Return. Yeah. Seventy-five percent water. You need air. All right, and you got fire because you got a 98.6 degree body temperature. You breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Fire Come on, the same thing. <laughs> you got four elements in you, and then the fifth element is spirit. Mm -hmm. So to replenish the body, you replenish it from what? Sure. From what God gave you. Right. That's what He told you in the garden. That gave everything for you to eat. Mm -hmm. So if you just eat food in its natural form, you will reestablish the equilibrium of the body. I don't care if you got diabetes or what. Fast for 60 days, juice fast for 60 days, and it'll go away. Mm. I don't care what you got. Mm. So take care of your health. That's yes. right. Okay? And why I'm saying all of this is because this is about being responsible and being a self-directed people. That's right. You got to get off of this, I got somebody, have to have somebody help me mentality. Exactly. All right, government don't owe you nothing. 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 You don't want it. You shouldn't. They owe you nothing. The only reason that you're getting into this mire that they're spinning out of control is because you keep asking them for things. Mm -hmm. They just showed you with the election. Y'all want to pick it in protest. They just showed you every, who, who elected the president every four years. Not us. Not us. It's like they're on Wikipedia. 
College every, of Electric On Wikipedia, <laughs> every four years, the Electoral College Come elects on now. the president. That's right. They do. Period. Period. Yeah, got you, going down there, you ain't elected no president. Thank what you. What you getting excited for? Presidents are selected. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you need to have some sort of interest. And the interest is... The United States is composed of businesses. Mm -hmm. yes. You either yes. work for someone who has a business you or you own it. one. Mm -hmm. You either become a boss or work for one. Okay. That's right. It's 100%. What do you see around you? Look out the window. What do you see? Uh, Go downtown. Walk downtown. What do you see? Businesses. All right. What you see all over the United States of America? Businesses. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. You ain't been told that. Now, let me tell you this. In the public, everything operates through a business. They get you with this one word called individual. Y'all heard of taxes and everything? They say individuals will have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Who in there knows what the definition of the word individual is? Didn't ever think about that, did you? An individual is an organization. It's a corporation. Mm -hmm. The government only taxes corporations. Mm -hmm. That's it. When you, even when you're filing in your individual capacity, they have labeled you a corporation because your social security number mm -hmm. is a corporation number. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the EIN number for your business is nine digits and the EIN number for your social security number is nine digits? Mm -hmm. All right, and it slid a decimal over mm -hmm. on you. They both corporate identification numbers. And life is like a game, like Monopoly. Who knows how to play Monopoly? Monopoly is called Tom Team. Mm -hmm. He was an Italian banker. That's where the principle of it derives from. Monopoly came into existence from Parker Brothers. They bought it in 1936. It actually has a history much older than that. These people are always trying to tell you things, around, especially around that time in 1936, and they did a lot with the game of Monopoly. Mm -hmm. In the game of Monopoly, you open up the board, and you got to pick a what first to, to play the game. Okay. You're talking, right? You got the cat, the dog. I always get the money bag. Thimble. <laughs> right, thimble, iron, iron wheelbarrow, right, yeah. horse, Dog race car, and the hat. Right, and the hat. <laughs> okay, you gotta play the game. You need a what? Token. Okay, in the game of commerce, we gotta get a token. What you gonna play with? A corporation, S Corp, C Corp, LLC, trust, estate, partnership, association. What we gonna play with? Gotta play the game. Get your token. They play the game without a token. Mm -hmm. By default, they give you a token called individual that has all the liability and pays all the money in the tax. Worst, worst token to get out of the box. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you educate yourself, like, damn, we play the game with trust. That went bad on Trump. Trump don't pay no taxes. Trump mm -hmm. was incensed with that. He said, oh, y'all said I just said y'all don't either. You know why? He do it legally because ain't nothing in his name. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everything is in his business name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. I have, and he said that. I got every, your life is a business. Mm -hmm. You came up here, do you know that you can deduct the mileage in your car, yep. driving right. from your home, up here right now and come and listen to me, that's sure business can. expense. That's right. right. You know you get through and take your wife out to eat. That's after right. you come from this. That's considered a business yes. expense when you eat on lunch. These are deductions and allowances that you're allowed to have when you have a business. Why would you ever put anything in your name? You can put the house in the business. Mm -hmm. You can put the car in the business. Matter of fact, it's much more powerful. Let me talk about Social Security numbers real quick. Social Security numbers, the, uh, the credit bureau is not supposed to have your Social Security number because Social Security was made for what? Social Security! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But made for a private, the credit bureaus are private families. TransUnion is not even an American company. I believe it. That's why some of the credit bureaus don't pull from. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that? They only pull from, like, they don't experience. pull from experience. experience. Yeah. They don't pull from the third one because it's not an American company. You got foreigners collecting information about you. Mm -hmm. Now, who's heard of a CPN number? How many people told you it was illegal? How many people told y'all the CPM was illegal? Well, we're going to kill that right now. I'm going to go to the FBI website. All right. We're going to go to the FBI website. We're going to see what the FBI has to say about that.
Here's their mortgage fraud report. And I'm going to let them tell it to you first because I think they explain it very well. I think the FBI explains this very well, you know, by CPNs. Here it is right here. Number 35, all right? You see right there? It's all of it right there. It says, I'll read it to you. Credit privacy number, CPNs are nine-digit file numbers that follow the same algorithm as Social Security. Account numbers. Currently, federal laws allow individuals to legally use CPNs for financial reporting and protect those individuals who do not wish to disclose their Social Security account number. Individuals who acquire CPNs are complete. Here's the key. Well, forgive me, people mess up. Individuals who acquire CPNs are completely responsible for any debt they incur using this number. Acquiring a CPN is supposed to be a free service. Therefore, websites that offer CPNs for fee are most likely scams. Mm. That's why off the FBI website. Now, how do I know that? Because I've been doing it ever since uh, 1992. Mm. Y'all can write the book down. I got a book called The Paper Trip. Mm -hmm. And there's one called The Secrets of the Social Security Number. I discovered both of those books. And I ain't never bought a house using my Social Security Number in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was very young when I did it. I was about 22 years old when I discovered this information. Because I had bad credit. You know, I was coming out of college. You know, I catch you together and start throwing y'all credit cards. And every day when you first get a high school, oh, yeah. it's like they just give them to you. That's right. And you don't know nothing about handling credit. You mess up. I did the same thing, messed up. Had bad credit. Needed to give me something. And I found out this information. And went and got me a CPN number. We didn't call them CPNs back then. We called them TINs. Tax identification numbers. We go to the IRS and get them. Go to the credit bureau. Set us up a new, completely new credit file and do it. I've been having four credit files for 20 years. Every time I mess up one, I rotate to the next. Because <laughs> it cleans off what? Every what? Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Bible. Go straight out the Bible, out of Deuteronomy. You have to release a creditor every seven years. And that's important for you to know because the laws come from the Bible. That's right. Yeah. All the land. That's right. All law. Why do you think the judge has on the road? He walks mm -hmm. in the courtroom with what on his hand? Bible. And why do courts look like what? Church. Because they're ecclesiastical. That's another story. I want to get in there. See, so you want me to preach? All right, we're gonna go into we're gonna go into the money now because I'm giving you some background information. Because just as she said, what I discovered was, and I said, man, you know how to incorporate? I paid five hundred dollars to incorporate the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just street cat, ass money. I said, man, I need to do something with this money. I had to start me a business. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Get you a company. You got to incorporate. How you do that? I know my man over here. He'll do it for you, pay. I'm going to go call me 500. Oh, yeah, man. 500, go do it for me. Came back, had a nice little leather, you know, bounder for me, my stamp, my corporate stamp, my seals and all of that. Nice little package and everything. Later on, I found out I got that at Office Depot. Forty-five. <laughs> 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 I could have did incorporation for 100, you know. So everybody don't know. Incorporating is a mysterious thing to some people. But they, when they find out how amazingly simple it is, you know, every girl in my life and everything, I make them go down to Secretary of State. What I got to do that? Walk your behind in there. Mm -hmm. Go right over there and ask that lady. And she's going to help you. Take this paperwork and pay it. And do it right. I have to make them do it. And then when they come out, they wow, that was easy. So now their mind's starting to release a little bit. So that's okay. Let's get it done now. Okay, and it's not just incorporation. I mean, step one, you get your bank account. Because right after you incorporate, you get your EIN number. First thing I want you to do is go to the bank and open up your bank account. Mm -hmm. All right? While you're there, you're going to tell the lady there that I need someone from merchant services to give me a call. Because you're going to get your merchant account so mm -hmm. you can accept credit cards. Mm -hmm. Okay? What do I need to do to get a merchant account? Well, we explain that to you in our thing. This is very simple. You just need to have some verbiage on your website. That's all they look for. And they'll give you the credit card machine and an account. So you can put it. Let me tell you something. Just accepting PayPal, you don't look legitimate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have my company right now. It's not, I don't consider it an MLM company. I have a merchant account. Merchant accounts don't issue, banks don't issue merchant accounts to MLM companies. Y'all know that? Right. Mm -hmm. This is considered high risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's called high risk activity or high risk company. They won't issue. They, they, banks don't give uh, MLMs. They have, to, they have to go to third parties and get. I learned all this opening my company. Mm. 
I got Chase and Bank of America. That's who currency circulating operates through. In case y'all are wondering. Okay, money goes into account. And I have PayPal. PayPal is good. It's only good for about 50% of the money. You have to have a PayPal account, but you want a business bank account because you can withdraw your PayPal money and make a direct deposit into your bank account. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, now you're creating activity in your bank account. Mm -hmm. So once you get this business credit up to a, over an 80, 85 or 90, I got your personal credit rolling at about a 750. Mm -hmm. If you got those two things, you're supposed to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. There are credit investors out there. I talked to a chick the other day. She's a waitress at Cheesecake Factory at Perimeter Mall, white girl. All right. What she do for a living? Credit investor. You know what that means? She got like a seven eight credit score. She loans out a credit score. In other words, you want to build a million dollar house, you got bad credit. You come to me, I do my due diligence, find out, because it's only about $300,000 to build a million dollar home. Mm -hmm. We build a home, use my credit to build a home. Mm. All right. We turn around having it appraised. It appraised out at 1.2. Mm. All right. We look at the days of the market. From the MLS of the real estate agent, find out we can sell it by 60 days. Mm -hmm. All right, we reduced it by 800,000. We sell it for 800,000. I pay only 300,000 dollars back. How much money we got to split? Five. Five hundred thousand. She works. She a waitress at at, at our cheesecake factory. She do it because she want to do it. Mm -hmm. That's what she loved to do. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> off her credit. When I say you can make money without money. All right, my first real estate deal I did, okay, I was looking at vacant houses. Vacant houses, there's somebody who wants to sell it because vacant houses ain't making nobody no money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If there's a mortgage on it, they definitely want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But even if it's free and clear, they got to keep the upkeep on it. Okay. It's a burden. It's not income producing. It's not an asset. Mm -hmm. It's a liability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing down all the vacant houses and everything. I'm going to the tax assessor's office to find out who the owner of it is. Okay, then I got, I call information, give me a couple of phone numbers. I call seven people. I got 200 addresses. And I was scared. I got, I got 200 addresses. What am I going to do? Man, I don't know if I call these people. I'm nervous and everything. I'm going to spend all this time getting all these people. I'm going to call some people. Pick up the phone call. Seven person on the phone. I said, hey, I guess uh, you want to sell your house over there? Yeah. I said, okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be right over to come and see you. I studied negotiation. One point of negotiation, I always know he who names the first number first, what? Loses. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. You name the number first in negotiation because you don't know what's on their mind. Exactly. Right. You just lost a lot of damn money. Open <laughs> <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> right in your mouth. So we, I meet the man at the house. Okay, I look, I know what the after repair value is. All right. I bring the comps, the comparative market analysis on it. I see what the spread is. So I said, how much you want for it? He said, how much you want for it? I said, how much you want for it? He said, how much you want for it? I said, come on, man, how much you want for it? He said, tell me. He knew the game. <laughs> 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 you know, you got to be careful when you run them in the building. They know it just like you know it, all right? Hmm. So I said, man, come on. I said, but I will do it. He said, look, man, $48,000. That was a pretty good price. That was a pretty good price. Gave me a spread of about thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And inside, I was like, "Oh, I just made money." But did I do that? Did I show that on the outside? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. What did I do on the outside? Act like you was Say, man. I said, "Look, man. Yo, yo, yo. I got a, it's new bathroom, HVAC kit. That's ten thousand dollars, man." Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> My real estate agent right. told me not to sell it for less than forty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. I'm not going under forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I just got eight thousand dollars more. Amen. Right. Amen. But I kept a straight face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, "I ain't going below forty thousand." I looked at him. Thirty-eight thousand. He said, "Okay, thirty-eight five. Signed a deal, signed a contract, gave myself 30 days to close. You put a contingency clause in there that is based off your ability to acquire financing. acceptable financing. Yeah. Everybody probably hear about that. Yeah. Went to the closing day and picked me up a check for $55,000. Wow. And I was broke. That was in 30 days. Damn. And I spent $35 to make that happen. Damn. 
I spent $35, they gave me $10 consideration to make the deal. That's why you leave out the real estate agent, because they want you to put some money in escrow. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. want you private people, as she was talking about, when they do business, we do it how we want to do it. Mm -hmm. We don't need the real estate agent involved in it. Yeah, and I spent $25 on the ad and put the ad in the paper. said, handyman <laughs> special, deep discount. $35, I made $5,000. All right, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you how this 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 system works. We are gonna go to the back office. This currency circulator right here. Here's a login screen right here, ain't pretty? Got the money flowing out of, yes. out of the cell phone. I spent three four months on this after I opened my mouth at a meeting and said I was gonna do it. So I had to do it. Mm -hmm. I spent my money. I invested my money and everything into this to make this work, to bring this to y'all, okay? And what this is, I'm going to log in, I'm going to show you. Off the educational system that Joyce so eloquently explained to you a little bit earlier, here's our back office of our system. I, when I did this, within the first week of me doing this, I had 500 people join. Everybody in MLM has said that's incredible. I know, I ain't do MLM. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And three, I did that about three, about, about a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's darn good. About a week's time. It slowed down since I ain't been like on it like that, but people have been consistently signing up every day. Mm -hmm. Have people sign up every day. All right. We have an e-wallet system too. Electronic wallet system, you move money electronically. I'm very familiar with it. I don't know if y'all know anything about API. It stands for automatic program interface mm -hmm. and so forth. You're going to see a lot of that in programming nowadays. This whole system back here, and I'm going to show you what the boards look like. <laughs> we have a board view, and we have boards. <coughs> Sound like something she was talking about she was doing yeah, on paper. All right. The <laughs> thing is, but she was talking about I already know because she had 25 to 100. Right. That concept is not new. It, everybody on planet Earth does it. I do a lot of business internationally. United States, people stay away from the United States because we have so many laws against, especially in doing things without goods and services mm -hmm. All right, But overseas, there are a lot of people, because I deal with overseas, who do something similar to what's called a susu. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of a susu? Mm -hmm. African susu, they do it in Africa, they do it in India, they do it a lot, they do it in Mexico. Everybody do it except for us. We just not community oriented like that. They understand the power of the community coming together, aggregating their capital and helping each other. Mm -hmm. So I set up this system because years ago I was a part of something called Friends Helping Friends. Anybody remember that? Yes. Okay, Friends Helping Friends, in my entire life, I have never seen that. I don't care about none of y'all network marketing companies. Y'all, okay, because I ain't never seen this. I, when that came out, it took the city of Atlanta by storm. Yes, it did. Lottery ticket sales dropped 50%. Wow. I never forgot it. Mm. They didn't stop it. It just kind of fizzled out on its own because everybody was doing it. So everybody took those concepts with them, though, but nobody organized it in such a way that it can be organized properly. I don't know why I keep looking at you and thinking that you're Dominique Wilkins. Anybody tell you that? No, you never <laughs> tell you that. I kind of like Dominique a little bit, right? <laughs> 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 I said, what are you doing here? I know he got money. <laughs> but anyway, with this system right here, we did eight steps. Okay, we have a 25, 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 2,500, and $5,000 board. You can move through all these boards just a one time investment of $25, and I'm going to show you how. Mm. Just like that. Okay. Now, under here, you'll see our boards. And I'm, I'm going to show you what the boards look like. This is what our back boards look like right here. All right. Pyramid. Well, all MLM is just by, it's called a, a, what's it, binary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, binary level type here uh, uh, thing. Binary. Okay, however, it's a little different. Uh, we got, and I'm going to show you the rules to it in just a second so you can understand it. This is not MLM. Mm -hmm. All we request that you do is get two people. I don't, I don't, I don't expect anything else from you. To qualify for commissions, you only have to refer two people. That's it. I have nothing else from you. Two people. 
Some people say, I ask some people say, you know, I can't get two people. You know what I'm <laughs> Okay, so we did this for you. The system works where even if you don't, if you just join and don't refer anyone, three months, four months, maybe six months down the line, you may get a text message saying you have $15,000 in your account. So the system works where everybody makes money. That's how we got it set up. However, however, the system also has in it, if you haven't got your two people, we will not pay out your $15,000. So, do you think if you see $15,000 in your account, you can go and get two people? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, the person who came recruiting on somebody become, you know, a grand master of recruiting in just 5.2 seconds. They grand master getting people in now. Because it's 50. It's just like a story I would tell people. It's that like, there was this king. I always have to tell the story. There was a king. All right? And he was talking to one of his subjects and he asked the subject, I need you to concentrate. I need you to focus. And he told the king, I can't concentrate. I can't focus. So the king called over his guard and said, hey, come here, man. Go get me a tray and put some glass of water on it. And I want you to come and get that full glass of water. I want you to give it to him. He did that. He gave it to him. He said, now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk around the entire kingdom with this tray with this glass of water on it. And I don't want you to spill one drop. He looked at his guard and told him, if he still one drop, I want you to cut off his head and bring it to me on the platter. <laughs> so he walked around the entire kingdom with the water. Do you think he spilled a drop? Yeah. Wow. Okay, he got back to the king and said, your majesty, I've done as you requested. I walked all over the kingdom with this tray of glass of full water and I did not spill one drop. And the king told him, I told you you could concentrate. <laughs> Y'all understand the moral of that oh, story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually when a person is telling you that they can't do something, it's because they ain't been motivated enough. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what they're really saying to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? They ain't been motivated enough to do what they need to do. That's right. That's what it takes to be in business. Business don't have nothing to do with intelligence. There's plenty of intelligent people broke. That's right. Broke. Mm -hmm. They can trick. Plenty. PhDs. Broke. Super intelligent. It is persistence and goal setting. You have to be focused and you have to be persistent. And the only way you have to be, the only way you can be persistent, you have to be what? Passionate. So I teach everybody, you got to do what you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. When you see that calling in your mind, that is God speaking to you, yearning to be released. Something is supposed to be coming out of you and you are ignoring the call mm -hmm. and doing something else. You have no business doing. You are not Fulfilling your purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's selling, you know, uh, 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 knitting gloves. You might love to knit gloves and say, Yusuf, I don't know how I can make a million dollars knitting gloves. It ain't for you. Because you know why? It's never but about how. This is a mistake a lot of you make too. It's never about how you're going to get rich. It's about what. What do you want? In the Bible it says, ask and what? You shall what? Shall receive. You shall receive. And you don't receive because you don't what? Ask. All right, it's right in there. It tells you Mark right. 11, 22 through 26. If you tell this mountain to be cast into the sea and do not doubt it in your heart, but believe right. that what you have asked for, it shall be yours and nothing shall be impossible for you. He also did, he also said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all things will be added to you. Y'all know they added that question answer that question? Luke 17, 21. Everybody read it right now. It says, don't look here, don't look there, for the kingdom of heaven is where? At hand. hand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. The light shines in the darkness, the darkness comprehended it not. These are things that they're talking about. So it's right there in the Bible. They tell you the same thing. They give these principles in there that nobody ever pays attention to. You ask, it's not about how you're going to make money. You know why it's not about how? Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yes, you right. can't see the future. You don't know what's going to happen. It's that God will make somebody rich in an instant. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. All right, so if, you, if you're doing gloves or whatever, you'll be doing gloves. This is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. I, what I made my money with, I had no idea ever in a million years that the stuff I was studying was going to be making the kind of money it's making. Never in a million years. Knowledge is power. 
you can do the same thing. You might be needing, needing, all of a sudden you got your website up, Hollywood see it. Look, we finna do a, a major scene in a movie, and uh, we need 20,000 of those gloves that you need, and can you provide them? Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you off to the races. That's how it happens. Yes. When you ask any successful, unsuccessful person, there's one thing I guarantee you this, and y'all leave here with this, you take this to the bank. Anybody who is unsuccessful, ask them what they want. They I guarantee know. you they say they don't know. They don't know. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you don't know what you want, you don't know what to ask for. That's right. That's right. All right? And you can't have it. That's the number one thing. Just start testing that if you don't believe it. Go and talk to anybody who's unsuccessful and ask them what they want, and they're going to say, I don't know. You have to know what you want, okay? Let's look at this right here. We have also an e-wallet management system as well. Right here, this is banking at its finest. Oh, there it is. This is banking at its finest right here. We have a fund management tool where you can transfer money in and out of your account right, and to other individuals. Mm -hmm. E-wallet system is pretty much fundamental nowadays in a lot of MLM companies and so forth. We had a software in our particular, in our particular program too where you can take money, PayPal, transfer it. You get your money anytime you want. What happens is when you get put in $25, this board that I was just showing you right here, the four people on the bottom, right here, where is it at? Oh, did I, did, I, did I move it? Okay, let me just pop it back up. These four people at the bottom right here. All right, when you're looking at this right here, as people get referred, the system automatically places people. 25, 25, 25, 25. The $25 goes two up to a two up to your sponsor at the top. You get $100. He automatically moves to the $50 board. It does the same thing all the way up. The system will deduct $50 out of your account. Put $50 in savings. You're only paying $25 to get in. You come off the first level, you're in the green. Mm -hmm. It'll take the next 50 and pay for the next board, which is a $50 board. 50 times 4 is 200 It's going to deduct $100 from that. Put it in your savings account. Now you got $150. All right, now, you're on the $100 board. 100 times 4 is what? $400. All right, it's going to deduct $200 from that. They got $350 in your account. $200 on the next board is $800. Mm -hmm. It's going to take $400 put in your account. Now you got $750 in your account. Pay for your next class. $400 times four is $1,600. Mm -hmm. It's going to take $800 that put in your account. Now you got, what, $1,500? $50 in your bank? $1,550 in the bank? And now it paid for your next class. $800. $800 times four is what? $3,200. Mm -hmm. It's going to take $2,500 out of that to pay for your real estate investment class. Put $750 in your account. Now you got, what, $2,250 in the bank? Mm -hmm. All right? $2,500 times, uh, $2, times uh, four is what? $10,000. It's going to take $5,000 out of that. Now you got $7,500 in the bank. Mm -hmm. It paid for your investment class. Now, when we talk about the last step, it's called, the reason it's $5,000 because that's very nominal fee for the information in there because the, I don't know if anybody knows about an unincorporated <coughs> business organization. What an unincorporated business organization is, is a private trust. Because most of us should be doing business first, especially some of the kind of businesses that I'm seeing spring up. Okay, when you're dealing with private, see, that's what I specialize in. That's what I teach for a living for the last four, is how to be private. Mm -hmm. How to do things privately. Mm -hmm. The problem with everybody, and y'all listen, I'm going to get out of education. This is all, all I'm going to put all the jokes aside. I'm going to educate y'all. It's going to take me five minutes. because Y'all need, need to know this before you leave. So you won't end up in trouble or something like that. Now, let me see. I think I can get it on my website. Yeah, I can get it on my website. This is my website, High Frequency Radio. And let's see if I go PDF file. I built all my websites. I built this website currency circulator. I did it all myself, 100% myself. I built it. Yes, I built it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I built the website myself. I'm going to teach you to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, right here. 
this PDF document. We got and this is what I want to show you, and then uh, then we're gonna go to a close. I ain't gonna keep y'all all night. Right here in oh, I think it's under Constitution. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right. So we can come back on the board as we go, right? Yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to re-enter too, because okay. you can re-enter. All right. All right. But I want to show y'all this because you have to understand some things. Okay. Everything in America, everything in America, mm -hmm. all law is either public law or private law. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't pick it in protests. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't complain. That's right. Because everybody doing that look like the biggest damn fool. That's right. That's right. Thank you. They don't do anything because they're looking at and that's Thank why they you. get police. Because they need protection against these ignorant people. Because mm -hmm. that's what is happening. Is you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. yeah, they need protection against you because you don't study the law. They don't know. You have public law and private law. Public law, constitutional law, criminal law, administrative law, public yes, international yes. law, and tax law. Because taxes are only on anything that's what? Public. public. Right. You cannot tax anything private. Mm -hmm. You only tax public. Because tax law is public law. Mm -hmm. Private law is contract law, tort status law, property law, family law, private international law. That's why mm -hmm. she was talking about agreements. Contract law is based off agreements. Mm -hmm. Contract law is the highest law. In the Constitution, they have a clause that you can Congress can't make any law that will impair the obligation of contracts. Mm -hmm. When you your first contract that you ever make is with who? I want to say myself. God. You have a covenant. Right. That's your first, and that right there dictates your moral code. Mm -hmm. You got to have some sort of covenant with God. That's right. Okay, that's your first contract that you enter into. And that's why that's why contracts are so sacred. Contracts are sacred. Mm -hmm. But they, they operate on the private side. But you have to know how not to cross over the fence. Now, you know, I, I tell you, tell this story. When I was a little boy, I walked home from elementary school in Dallas. We got alleys and everything. I, and I used to walk home from school, and it was my favorite alley. Because every yard on that alley had dogs. Because I was a big dog lover when I was growing up. And some at some of the backyards had dogs that if you stuck your head over there, they're going to try to rip it off. <laughs> and then some of the dogs are real nice. You know what I'm saying? So you walk down the alley and everything, you got to know which fit not to stick your hand in the fence and everything. Because some dogs, they, you ever seen a dog that has zero understanding? Oh, yeah. No matter how you're trying to pet him, he just got zero understanding. No, All right. Well, we had those dogs. That's what this is like. This is the alley. When you walk up this alley, you better know how to stay over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is what teaching you about unincorporated business organizations is about. It's called trust administration, how to manage a business and maintain privacy. Your rights, you are not in the public. When you hear them say public, the public, they're talking about the government. Public means government employees. It does not mean you. You are a private citizen, and your rights are in the private, and you got to know how to maintain that. That's why I told y'all look at John Wick, because the only time you saw Federal Reserve notes in John Wick, they burned them up. All yeah, business right. is conducted with gold and silver. Uh -oh, okay. That's how you maintain. That's the real way you maintain privacy. You don't deal in gold and silver. They took. That's why they took it away. Mm -hmm. They took it away in 1933 and made it illegal because they had to force you over here, mm -hmm. and they put your kids in public schools. Mm -hmm. And y'all been, been falling ever since. All right, you got to know how to get back. So, when you understand that, okay, and that's important in business. This is business. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. All you mortgages out there, if you got a mortgage, your house is in a private trust. They call it a special purpose vehicle. It's just a fancy name for a private trust. The prison system is in a trust. Mm -hmm. McDonald's is in a trust. Walmart is in a trust. Every school system in the country is in a trust because they call the board of what? Trustee. 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 A in trust. Now, what's the difference in the police and the sheriff? Anybody know? The sheriff got power. Another reason I'm picking in protest. The police are supposed to protect. Uh, protect no. Them. You want? I'll pull up right here now. Supreme Court. Serve and protect. Okay, let me pull this up. U.S. Supreme Court. U.S. Supreme Court, mm -hmm. police have no duty to protect. Huh. All right. Huh. Now, this is another reason I'm picking a protest because 
Supreme Court told you about 50, 30 times that the police don't have no duty to protect you. But every time I look on TV and somebody gets shot down in the street, I see one of our ignorant people say, these are the people that's supposed to be protecting us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say they protect the public. Mm -hmm. Are you the public? No. no. That's what I mean. That's why they're looking at you and saying that you're illiterate. You're not the public. You're private. These people have told you 50,000 times. Police lied. And hey, who are the police? Yeah, they're serving other government. No. They are, they are security guards for the municipality. Was there any police officers in the Wild Wild West? No. No. There's only the what? Sure. Can, the shit, can the police kick you out your house on the foreclosure? No. Okay, can the police put you in the county jail? No. 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 They hold you down at the municipal and they'll, they'll arrest you, but they'll transfer you over there to the county and it's the sheriff down there. Because the sheriff is the law. They are security guards for the city of Atlanta, which is a private corporation. Y'all better get here. Mm. And police protect businesses. That's right. That's all they do. They protect businesses. They protect the business district. And when you take your behind down there and act up and rip and run, think you got a right to be down there on private property, and they snatch you up and hit you with the billy club, and then you want to <laughs> sue, all right, you need to understand where you're at. This is why I'm in my community, because we supposed to be developing neighborhoods and doing things like that and put our own police force Amen. to protect our community. That way your son won't get pulled over right. right, when you're driving because the police officers work for you, okay? Not for the city of Atlanta, okay? You got your own businesses established and everything. You're buying and selling from each other. Again, exactly. And everything. I don't care if all the businesses left the city. Good. Because anytime something like that, that's a, that means that that is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. the, the universe cannot stand a void. It's impossible for there to be a void. You understand that the laws of physics don't operate like that. When something leaves, something has to replace it. That's, that's right. right. You understand what I'm saying? So it's time for us to change our mind. Now, Robert Kiyosaki says something very, very good that basically goes into any of the people, wealthy people in America, I'll tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm. Poor, uh, broke is temporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Poor is forever. Mm -hmm. Anybody know the difference between broke and poor? Okay. You have to, you have to be that that you wish to become. Mm-hmm. Okay, people think that give me the money and then I'll be happy. It doesn't work like that. You have to be happy, then the universe keeps bringing things to feed the happiness. That's right. right. All right, this is where forgiveness comes in. Because in that ingredient in Mark 11, 22 through 26, it says you got to forgive. Yeah. You have to open up your heart and mm -hmm. forgive. Mm -hmm. Because when you have guilt, mm -hmm. you're blocking, you don't think, you're thinking. You oh, don't come on, distort it. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, so you got to do these things. All right, when it talks about broke is temporary. Because a person with a wealth consciousness can lose all their money and get it back. Mm -hmm. But a person with a poverty mentality, they can get a million dollars, five million dollars, and lose it in two years. It happens all the time and never get it back. Yes, it does. That's the difference. You magnetize what you are. You have to be that what you wish to become. If you want to be wealthy, you have to have a wealth consciousness. Mm -hmm. And as you start developing a wealth consciousness, you need to be exposed to things. Mm -hmm. And that's what Currency Circulator is all about. Exposing you, showing you how to incorporate, showing you how to get a Duns and Bradstreet number, get a credit score for yourself, a Paydex score, showing you how to put together your own website, showing you how to deal internationally because everything that you're buying out there, you go to Alibaba.com, everything got in, um, in Walmart, uh, uh, TJ Maxx, what's the other store? Ross, what's the other one? Mm -hmm. All the stores everybody can go to. Y'all be selling that on your, on, 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 on your website. A Jew told me never buy anything retail. Mm -mm. Do you see Jews in any of those stores? Wholesale. No. No. Do you see Jews walking through the mall? No. no. Okay, do you see Jews at McDonald's? No. Mm -mm. Right. Do you see, well, damn, well, you, know, you know, I was going to say, do you see Chinese people in Chinese restaurants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you eat Chinese food, we eat Chinese restaurants. That's right, they ain't your bowl of rice. That's not Chinese food. They ain't going to you know, Chinese food don't look like that. But these are things that, uh, you know, we expose you to, and the last thing is the trust. The trust is the most important thing because that shows you how to aggregate your capital the way wealthy people do. What do I mean by that? When somebody comes and asks you for $300,000 to build something, mm -hmm. you don't trust that person because he can run off with the money, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you have a trust, it's a different story. Right. 
The issue is called trust capital units or trust certificates, a lot like stock certificates. Mm -hmm. And the trustee has a fiduciary duty to make you money, and if you don't, he can go to jail. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't do what he's going to say he's going to do with the money, he has to give it back. This is how everybody's building communities. Mm -hmm. Because they take all the money that's in the neighborhood, and they put it in a trust, an investment trust. Mm -hmm. And then they appoint competent individuals, not Uncle Bob, not Uncle Billy, <laughs> not the person at the meeting think they're the smartest person in the room. <laughs> the person who has demonstrated, because I like what Kevin Trudeau said, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? You ever listen to somebody ain't made money and tell you how to make money? Mm -hmm. I have girlfriends argue with me, ain't making no money, try to tell me how to run my business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they making a dime. And I'm sitting there trying to help them, and they're going to argue with me and tell me stupid enough, and I'm the one who got to pay to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know you men know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Tell them to sit there and argue with you, you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> About I'm, making, I'm, I'm doing it. What are you talking about? Argue with you, you don't know what you're doing. But I'm making the money, you're not. But you're smarter than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you what to do so you can make money. Because that is what the law of the universe dictates. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called cause and effect. The definition of insanity is to keep doing the same, same thing, thing over and over. over. Yes, yes, it is. Hoping for a different result. Yeah. The opposite of that. Is the definition of success is to keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's why you need a mentor. Because a mentor is saying, do like me, do what I do, and you're what? Get, get what I get. Exactly. You duplicate because that is how the laws of the universe operate. You know, you can't break the law of the universe mm -hmm. because the laws are put in place. And they tell you right there in Proverbs 9 1. Go read it. Tells you about the seven laws that regulate everything. And creation, wisdom, has built her house and hewn out her seven pillars. Pillars is something that is immovable. There are laws that regulate everything. And that's another thing. I know some people don't like me to sit and talk like this because some of y'all are too religious. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you for real. Some of y'all got what's called blind faith. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus said in 832, you will know the truth. And the truth should make you free. It ain't nothing about no belief. That's right. I had to keep it real with you and everything. And some people, they just, oh, I got a faith on God and everything like that. God, God helps those who what? Help themselves. God helps those who help themselves. All right, so I don't know where that's coming from. You got to, the helping hand you're looking for is at the end of your what? Oh, okay. You got to go out and do the work. Ain't nobody giving you nothing and don't nobody owe you anything. That's and right. it's your responsibility to educate yourself. What you're doing right now, this is called the private. See, I wanted to educate y'all a little bit. Because that's what I do. I'm a teacher. I'm not no salesperson. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? I'm not here to sell you on nothing. That's okay. right. Everything that I'm teaching you, I have done. Mm -hmm. Yes. I made the money. Mm -hmm. All right? I've done all of this stuff. I make millions of dollars in my life. I know what it feels like to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. all right. I know what it feels like to make $80,000 a day. Some people will never experience that in their life. And when I did it, that wasn't enough. Hmm. I'm going to be real. If you acclimate, oh, you adjust. You adjust every level you go up to. So the thing is with this, there's 25 hours to join. We have, we have almost 800 people in right now. We've been doing it for about three months. Got about 800 people in. We want to get 10,000 people by the summer. By the time we get 10,000 people, everybody in this room who has joined should have made $27,000 over probably about four or five times. Mm. Yes, yes. Everybody in this room. Yes, mm. yes. And I'm going to do it because I have a radio show. <laughs> okay. I market on the air. There you go. Right. Everybody yeah. comes to me. I, I come to the air every day. Right. Last Old thing people, I was right. in, I put in 2,000 people and just jumped out of it. Left it behind. That's how easy it was for me to do. Mm -hmm. So, I want you to see the product. Our product is education. Okay? That's right. I'm trying to give you something. We have a product and we have a service. I want you to learn. The money's nice. It's a nice byproduct of it and everything. You can make you some money. Hopefully, you make the $27,000. What we're looking for is 100 people to invest $5,000 of that money in an investment trust. 
and we're going to start building things. We're going to start building communities. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to start building stores, strip malls, okay. gas stations. You're going to start owning all of the things. You're going to stop being a consumer. Because as long as you're a consumer, you're That's a slave. Right. Consumer you're a slave. and crackhead is the same thing. Same thing. Amen. Consumer and crackhead is the same thing. Same. You're consumer, you're crackhead. You're addicted to something. What's the difference? No. Nothing. All right, so we got to get out of this mentality, start aggregating our capital, center it somewhere, yeah. and start building up our communities. Yeah. That's what I'm all about. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I'm done. Y'all have a nice night. Oh, let me tell you this. Y'all go to the website. Brenda is the one.